Hello everybody! I'll just check that this is actually recording. And it is. <laughs> Hi everybody! Welcome! Thank you if you endured through part one. That's 20 minutes! That's so long! Like, this is the problem with Battletech, is it has all this unnecessarily extra stuff. If you skipped the first one, don't feel bad, you didn't miss much. We're gonna skyrocket through this one, because this is actually the shorter part of the fluff. You know, the part where the game actually exists is um, the shorter part of the the fluff and the lore that uh, lives within Battletech. Uh, this is everything from the in-game. I'm going to do a quick recap. So if you skipped the first video, firstly, I don't blame you. I wouldn't watch a 38-minute video of me talking. <laughs> Secondly, all you missed was humans end up... Uh, they develop fusion reaction. They leave the Earth and go and create stuff. There's a crazy fancy uh, warp drive is invented called the Kony Fushida drive. People use it to create, uh, you know, jump ships that take you places and they settle a bunch of stuff and everyone gets upset. Um, there's a massive war and they sort of nuke everything and use chemical weapons and all the stuff and they make some rules. They say, no, everyone has to be uniformed. Everyone has to have a, uh, ha you know, not use nuclear weapons, not use chemical warfare, not attack cities, not be a total douchebag, basically. They invent the battle mech, which is very versatile, everyone loves it. They form a Star League, which is a big united government, and everyone for a time is happy and working together, and yay, team, and everything works out nicely. They create these things called hyperpulse generators, which send messages across distance of space. Uh, they're the only things that can send the message fast. Otherwise, you're sort of daisy chaining a relay, you know, like one ship to the next. Um, and a company that makes them is called Comstar, and they control everything. And after they get attacked this one time, they decide, you know what, screw you guys. We're going to shut down everything. And this guy called Jerome Blake says, you know, Comstar is going to remain neutral. We're not going to take sides. You don't attack us. If you attack us, you don't get H, you know, HPG service. You don't get any service on your phone. No data limit for you. Um, and they say, you know, our job uh, is going to become just keeping all the technology safe. Safe from the idiots that you guys are. And, uh, you know, he, he says, you know, Comstar is just going to protect these things and collect them. And that's exactly what they do. They collect them. They protect them. No one gets to use HPGs except Comstar. They're the only ones with the codes to do it. Um, Kerensky, a guy called Nicholas Kerensky has a similar idea. He takes all the scientists, all the important military generals, all the technology. They take a bunch of the technology and they bugger off into space and they disappear. And they're like, no worries. See you later. Um, lots of wars happen. Lots of things occur. And, um, you know, there's, a, it, it's sort of a big fight, and that's where we start. That's the political background of where we start the Fourth Succession War. So the Fourth Succession War is between five houses, right? You've got House Marek, who is Free Worlds League. You've got House Steiner, which is the Lyrans. You've got the Draconis Combine, which is um, the House Corita. Um, you've got House Davian, which is the Federated Sons, and you've got uh, House Liao, which is the Capellan Confederation, right? Now, these five houses, a lot of people have referred to Battletech as Game of Thrones in space, and I think that's exactly a, a perfect example. Um, you know, it's Game of Thrones in space with magic robots, you know, <laughs> basically. Um, and I, I, I think that's a, like that's what I love about Battletech, is you can get so intricate in the political stuff and, uh, you know, but the pro that's also simultaneously the exact problem with it, is there's too much stuff. So, let's quickly go through what happened. So, the 3025 to 3050 era, that's first edition Battletech. That's the houses fighting amongst themselves for resources. You then get 3049, or 3050 roughly. Um, you know, that's second edition Battletech. That's where the clans invade, right? The clans start attacking. Now, the clans are those dudes that Kerensky took 200 years ago, uh, buggered off with all the technology. They come back to, you know, attack. And they've got this mentality that, you know, Kerensky's vision was that they would come back and show people how to govern a united government, a government where people aren't getting destroyed and killed for no apparent reason, right? Now, there's two ways that they look at doing that. There's the crusader way, which is we're just going to kill everyone, and then everyone who exists will be in our way, and therefore they will know how to do it, 
which I think is a really good idea on the one hand. And then on the other hand, it's like, no, let's show them how to do it. You know, and they're the Warden clans. And they're like, well, our job isn't to kill them, it's to educate them. And I think that's a better way. But two good ideas looking at that. Now, these guys are so strong. Their technology is so advanced. Their warriors are so tenacious. Uh, you know, the strategies are so incredible. They just wipe the floor with all these inner sphere dudes. And uh, they create the second Star League. The, the Inner Sphere guys create an alliance to go and fight these clans. And, uh, you know, because they're unified against this enemy. And many of the clans see this as, yes, finally, they're working together. That's what we're here for. We're here to show them. You've got to work together. And so that happens. And they continue to just stomp. They ruffle stomp their way through the galaxy. Um, you know, and... Comstar looks at this and says, look, we have the technology hidden away to fight these guys. We have that. And they talk to certain members of the Star League and they say, okay, let's unite and let's take them on on the next planet they overtake. And they go to Tukayid, which is very, uh, you know, prominent planet. And uh, Clan Smoke Jaguar is fighting there. And they go and they smash the crap out of them on Tukiyid. Um, you know, all the different clans come and get involved. And it's a big battle. But Comstar and the Star League, the Inner Sphere, they win. And as part of that, they say, okay, here's a treaty. Give us 15 years. This is what we can do when we're at our best. You're clearly people who, you know, want to see us fight at our best. So it's a fair fight. Give us 15 years to prepare. Don't you attack anywhere else for 15 years. You don't have to give up any stuff for 15 years either. But, you know, just truce, a ceasefire for 15 years to prepare for this. The clans say, okay, that sounds fair, you know. So, suddenly, the place is a whirlwind. Okay, we have to get ready for this uh, this battle that's going to take place between the clans and, uh, you know, the people. And obviously, there's polit political stuff that goes on. They don't want... There's a lot of people who are sort of displaced... In the clan society, they don't want to be, you know, ruled by clan planets and stuff like that, um, that are sort of just left behind enemy lines, and there's a lot of tension that happens um, after that battle. Uh, the Federated Commonwealth is officially created, you know, the marriage of House Steiner and House Davian merges together, everything works nicely, and they finally officially sort of join this massive, uh, you know, huge political group together. During this time, Comstar also changes leadership, right? Now, um, part of it is that, uh, you know, the times they're changing, they're saying, you know, we need to give this technology to our, you know, the people of the Inner Sphere so they don't get killed by the clans. And others are like, no, 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 this is all a big scam to make us get rid of this stuff, right? And uh, what happens is there's a uh, assassination, basically. <laughs> a dude shoots, the second in command shoots the person who's in command. They take over and they say, we're going to open the vaults to the public. Everyone's going to get access to this lost Star League technology. This is exactly why we've been keeping it. Now, another group say, you know what? No, let's not do that. Firstly, you shouldn't be our leader because that's not how we do things. You don't just kill the person above you and take the job. That's not an appropriate way to, you know, <laughs> become the leader of Comstar. And secondly, we don't like what you're doing. This is not what Jerome Blake had in mind when he said that. You know, we need to keep it. We're still got to protect it from, from them, you know, and they take some technology and they bugger off and they form the separatist group of Word of Blake. And they head over to the Free Worlds League and they sort of establish themselves there where they have a lot of friends and they, um, you know, start to build a reputation around that area um, and spread their word, basically. You know, technology needs to be preserved. We need to keep this because war is bad for preserving technology. It's not good. It's good for extending technology, but it's also bad for preserving it. And they start spreading this. And a lot of people agree with them, especially in the Free Worlds League, who's sort of been there from the start. They're like, yes, we need to look after things. Um, a massive operation happens. You know, now geared out with the latest Star League era stuff, some recovered clan tech, etc. Uh, you know, the Star League decide, okay, we're going to go and fight the clans. We're going to go deal with it we're going to deal with it on their home world we're going to get rid of an entire clan they're aggressive they won't stop attacking us we've got to sort this out clan novacat um also says you know what 
you guys have the right idea. You know, you've banded together. This is what Kerensky wanted you to band together. We're going to help the Star League fight the clans. They say, we're going to tell you about our culture. This is what we've learned. This is, we're going to educate you about how to do it. This is what Kerensky wanted is sort of the clan Nova Cats mentality on this. Other clans disagree with that. They don't like that and they sort of banish them. <laughs> you know, later they'll banish them. Um, and so using that knowledge, they go and they do this Operation Bulldog. If you've played MechWarrior 3, the computer game, that's what this is. They fight the clan Smoke Jaguar. They then decide, you know what, we're going to take this to the next step. Task Force Serpent. They go back to the home planet of the Smoke Jaguars. They destroy them there. They say, we know about the clan technology. We know about clan rules. Here's the deal. We'll give you a trial. A trial of refusal. If we win this, you end your invasion, you bugger off. And uh, the clans say, yeah, okay, that's exactly what our society is. This is what Kransky wanted in some way, is you to engage with our culture. So let's do this. They have the battle they win the battle. The Great Refusal is one, ending the invasion officially. They say, yes, we're all done. But <laughs> now that there's no united enemy, the Star League, who, they, who are they united against? No one, right? So they start bickering over resources again. They start bickering over, okay, what should happen to the worlds that were taken by the clans? Do we get them back? Do the clans have them? What is going on here, right? Um, and a lot of people are unhappy with how things work and the Star League sort of starts to, uh, you know, dissolve again. <laughs> it starts to show signs that it's weakening. And the greatest sign of that is that the Federated Commonwealth splits. There's an internal political problem uh, between a brother and a sister who are sort of, again, fighting for succession. They're fighting to get on that top of the leadership thing. And uh, they start a civil war, which has this massive political reaction. Uh, you know, every, that un instability between those two sides, all the other factions are trying to work out, okay, which side do we pick, you know? The ones that are close to the Steiner border are like, let's back the Davians. The ones that are close to the Davian border are like, let's back the Steiners, right? So it's um, it's a very, a very tense political time. And there's so much that goes on in that little period of, of time. That political instability allows for um, the word of Blake to sort of sneak in and start um, forming their own nation. So on the sort of the Free Worlds League side of, of Terra, they, they've started to form some planets. And like, we're going to take these planets and we're going to call it the Word of Blake Protectorate. We're making our own nation. Um, on 3067, the Star League dissolves because of uh, intense political issues. And Word of Blake say, now's our time. Now that they're completely ununited we are going to rise up we're going to take this they nuke outreach right now this is the first use of nuclear weapons since the Aries convention on one of the most important planets in the inner sphere right and this begins the jihad right they they start saying no you guys are destroying the technology you guys are not good for humanity so you know what here's how we fix that we kill everyone and if everyone's dead then there's no technology to be fought over is there and they just break all the rules they use chemical weapons they destroy cities they attack cities they're using the best of the best equipment that they've been harboring for all these years and they just go bananas they are over the next decade they overtake almost every planet uh, in the center, you know, around that sort of area of the sphere, you know, they retake all those key planets, including Terra, Earth, right? Um, and they they fortify them in a way that is near impossible to to break through. Um, you know, they've they've got a massive naval fleet in the in the stars. They've got um, you know untold weaponry they're using orbital bombardment they're just destroying everything and they're very strategic about how they do it and this this becomes you know the beginning of the end right this creates a new duckage they're destroying everyone who has technology they're destroying that technology so that they're the only ones to have that technology for themselves right that's the whole idea behind it is that they want to keep that and they start spreading this propaganda right this this idea of mysticism that you know they're doing this for the greater good and the blah 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 right and this eventually creates like this next dark age thing which we'll we'll talk about shortly as well so eventually 10 years after it begins terra gets liberated 
again, uh, you know, this has become the core of the Blake Protectorate. This is the center of their their world, right? Uh, their their nation. And uh, it after ter- Terra Falls, it's like the most heavily defended planet in in the era uh, in the area. The Blake Protectorate sort of collapses. They they lose the ability to, tr- you know, I, I guess send decrypted messages, things like that. Their, their central hub is destroyed. And then slowly, bit by bit, they're all sort of uh, filed down and, and destroyed by this guy called Devlin Stone, right? Where Blake gets completely defeated and Devlin Stone is responsible. Now, Devlin Stone, he was a dude who got captured by the word of Blake, and he was put in this, uh, you know, re-education camp to try and, uh, you know, create him with his zealous mindset, you know, that they had, and he actually escaped from it. So he used that knowledge of, you know, their mindset, their mentality, that psychology that they had against them to try and, you know, strike at their heart and then work their way out, which is exactly what he did. And he decides, you know what, we're going to found this Republic of the Sphere. We've tried this with the Star League, but it becomes this big bickering session. We don't want that. We're going to restore everything. We're going to rebuild all the worlds. We're going to protect all the people. We're going to feed the hungry. We're going to clothe the sick. You know, all this stuff. And uh, th- that's exactly what happens. He rebuilds this thing and it takes him quite a while. It takes him, uh, you know, like a good 30 years. No, maybe 50 years. Longer than that. 50 years. And finally, he's happy with it. The Republic is functioning nicely. And uh, he says, okay... Everything is back how it should be. We've put in the things in place to protect our people. You know, we've made, uh, you know, the Knights of the Inner Sphere, this, this, this guardian force of the Republic who are here. They're here not only to, uh, you know, protect the Republic from its, from, you know, outside threats, but also to protect the public Republic from itself. You know, the problem with the Star League is it was still always five nations arguing over who's going to be the leader. The Republic is removing from that. If you are part of the Republic, you are removing yourself from that political situation, right? And, and you're, you're declaring your loyalty to that, to that greater good, but that other complex political situation still should exist, right? Uh, and, and you should still govern your areas, but you're, you know, engaging with this, this central body, right? This neutral central body. So he builds this this idea. And then he says, you know, okay, my job is done. We've we've built this up and I I am gonna go. When you need me again, I'll come back, <laughs> you know, but I'm just you won't see me for a while. And he disappears mysteriously, right? With this uh, you know, foreshadowing prophecy that one day he'll return and uh, you know, make everything better if they fuck it up again, basically. <laughs> Shortly after he disappears the HPG network that they've worked so hard to protect and preserve um, collapses. Like, completely collapses. For no other reason than the technology has sort of uh, malfunctioned. And it, like, malfunctions and it takes out the entire HPG network, right? It's long and complex what happens, but basically this throws then the age of, uh, you know, all their work, hard work, building, rebuilding things into this dark age, Right? Thanks to Word of Blake, no one has the technology, or people who do have the technology, they don't know how to use it effectively. It's all automated. We get thrown into this dark age again, and um, you know, people start, you know, having to just work with what they've got, uh, you know, technologically wise, and um, slowly the factions start to bicker and fight again amongst themselves. But the Republic stays fairly strong in, in keeping them in line. Then. Jade Falcon attacks the Republic. They say, you guys are bickering again. This is the perfect time for us to strike. You know, you guys, your mentality has changed. You were working together. Now you're all fighting again. So the best way for you to unite, as we've seen in the past, is for you to have someone who comes in and takes control and shows you the way. So they go and they attack the Republic. And, uh, you know, they're they're reasonably successful in doing that. Um, Whilst this is happening... You know, everyone starts fighting amongst themselves again. Uh, and a big part of that is, uh, you know, the Lyran forces see that the Free Worlds League has been absolutely decimated by um, the 
the sort of you know the jihad and the attacks that have gone on since then and they decide you know what we're gonna invade the free world league space we're gonna start taking the planets back these are our mortal enemies you know they have been for hundreds of years we're gonna finally eradicate them and take this space and clan wolf who uh have sort of it's a clan wolf in exile right the ones that have removed themselves from the situation say yeah well since these planets are, are being overtaken anyway we might get in on that action help you out the Lyran forces and uh you know we'll we'll join with you and we'll claim some planets for ourselves um and they start to take over parts of the free world league um shortly after that you see jessica marrick comes back now she's starts talking about this idea of the star league returning to the star league she starts bringing people back free worlds league and that first step on her agenda is to reunite the free worlds league so that everyone is uh you know incorporated in that uh and that's that's sort of where the fluff ends that's the end of what's gone on so far the only other piece of fluff that is sort of you know beyond that is uh you know that kerensky's original message calling for everyone to have peace because it was transmitted on a normal radio rather than on a hyperpulse generator, it uh, slowly has reached the furthest part of the inner sphere, uh, and that's in 3550. And that's like I like that. That's how it's going to end. Is maybe once it reaches there, we'll have achieved this peace. But that's that's a timeline in a nutshell. Um, the Dark Age, where the Dark Age begins, that's more or less um, where the uh, Clicks game takes up. Uh, and sort of the end, the, the end of the Jade Falcons attacking the Republic and the, sort of the beginning of the Lyran forces invading Free Worlds League space is sort of where the Age of War clicks game begins. So th that's really all there is to it. Um, that should give you some context. I think this has gone on for quite long enough. Um, thank you for watching. I hope that... Actually, we might go back to the start. I hope that this has been informative for you guys. I hope this has been helpful for noobs. And I hope it sort of has started to explain some of what's going on with some of these different things. Um, I will try to make some more of these videos. It does take a while to make them. Um, just to research and make sure my facts are straight. So I'll see you in the next video. I don't want this one to be as long as the last one. I hope this was informative. If it wasn't, please let me know. If it was, please let me know uh, in the comments. I love hearing from people who have watched my videos and their opinions on what they've said so please do that more often thank you very much i'm going to shush now you have a good day ciao for now